Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Thursday, the 15th of June 2023. So yesterday, stocks and gold slump after hawkish Fed sends rate hike odds soaring. Uh, it's a bit bizarre, really, isn't it? Because obviously yesterday they paused with the uh, rate increases. Uh, Fed pauses after 10 uh, hikes signals very hawkish outlook uh, with no recession. Uh, bizarre headlines. These are US interest rates held after inflation uh, fell to less than half UK's rate. I mean, if there is, uh, they're still hawkish, that means there's still an underlying threat uh, to uh, in, um, inflation, then why the pause? It just seems bizarre. And then come out to, in the press conference and say that they're still going to uh, continue to raise rates. Uh, UK stocks finished, sorry, US stocks finished mixed post FOMC after the hawkish reaction to the Fed's uh, dot plots. Uh, that's a, a graph where they plot uh, potential future rate increases or decreases and uh, market uh, recover after Powell distanced himself from a hawkish dot plot. So uh, basically, is the, is the threat. The market goes down, um, right, I'll just distance myself from it, and then the market's free to come back up. So up we go again. It's uh, it's just like it's all engineered, isn't it? Anyway, let's have a look at um, today and then get into what happened. Yes, so let's look at the economic news. So we've got uh, 115 main refinancing uh, from the Eurozone. They're going to increase rates uh, by a quarter of 1%. And uh, we've got the monetary policy statement by uh, the criminal herself, Lagarde. And then 1.30, we've got uh, some manufacturing data, retail sales, uh, unemployment claims, fully fed. And uh, oh, she, we've got an ECB conference at 1.45, so that's probably when she's going to be speaking. 2.15 p.m., we've got industrial production. So all economic news out of the way before the Dow opens at 2. Reaction to yesterday's uh, or yesterday evening's news and uh, what we can expect during today and we'll kick off with the Dow. So as you can see from uh, the chart here that uh, we moved down, we started to move up quite nicely in the pre-market session, then we were hit with this pause, but it was already predicted anyway, maybe even f uh, priced in, but uh, the market went down and came back up. Let's have a look at the 30-minute chart, you can see, uh, get a better indication of this. So we hit, went straight down, uh, let's have a look, one, two, 250 points. And then the market uh, reversed with the uh, buying there and then it's got stuck in a sideways range and it's now making its way back to the upside. It needs to go above the close in the DP and also take out the 200 MA and the 50 EMA in the 30 minute chart with the high uh, couple of hundred points, 250 points higher than where we're currently trading. So in the daily chart, you can see on uh, Tuesday that we went uh, to, well, went through the 34.261. And uh, yesterday, now we've got uh, this bar projected back. Uh, we traded up to 78% uh, retracement. And also uh, we've traded uh, lower than this as well. So let's just get rid of these. Let's just see what uh, strength this market has by projecting back to the upside. Uh, which I've just removed and put back on, obviously. Um, so these are the areas where you can expect uh, some resistance as the market makes its way back up to the 89% uh, uh, retracement, where, in theory, it would actually run out of steam. So it'll be interesting to see if the market can get back to this level. Like I say, in the 30-minute chart, at the moment, we're sideways to higher. But uh, again, I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, now all of the main news is out of the way that we don't see a bit of a move to the downside, more so in the German DAX. In the German DAX yesterday, we spoke about the market trading up to the 16,333, and it did this yesterday, and we do now have a new high. Let me just uh, grab this for you. It's only by five points, uh, which you can see there, 16,338. Nonetheless, it's a new all-time high. The market is also above that uh, 89 there as well. What I'll be looking for today is uh, I will be just drawing on these fibs on the one bar because I've got nothing else to draw it to and uh, having a look, see if the market's got the strength to get through uh, the 16,322 or go back to even to the 33 as well. Uh, the 38 will be interesting to see if the market has the strength for this. In the 30 minute chart, you can see yesterday morning they took advantage of the lack of selling ramp the market all the way up to the 33 and like i say they've actually put in the the new high of 338 
Uh, yesterday, when we reached this level, we came back and then we came back 78% retracement and 89 there. And then the market uh, moved lower on the news of the FOMC last night, back down to the previous day's close. A lot of strength again last night after Powell said, no, not me, Gov. And the market uh, rallied back. But at the moment, uh, we're above the DP, which is good. We're also uh, above the 50 EMA. But I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get, uh, like I say, after the event, because there's no major news. The ECB is already, you know, baked into the cake that they're going to increase rates by a quarter of 1%. And that's not really good for the markets anyway. So we'll just have to see, I, you know, if we don't get a, a straight reversal on uh, yesterday's uh, bar. Um, I'm just trying to think of a good reason why we could move the market higher, except for that nobody wants to sell into it at this point in time. But we'll have to take a view as the market unfolds and trade it uh, accordingly. And in the five minute chart, uh, we took off uh, straight on the cash open. You can see huge volume there, market moving up, never stopping, coming back, doing just over 100% retracement, putting in that uh, new all time high of uh, 38 and then the market uh, trading to the downside and getting stuck in a range and making its way down until we had the uh, US uh, FOMC and there you can see the market coming back retesting and then uh, moving back to the upside and overnight uh, prices have uh, continued to move higher but at the moment uh, struggling with the close uh, we've been through comeback um, we are over sold on the downside so we are looking to try and move the market back it may be a case today that we get a bit of a move on the initial uh, open to suck people into the upside and then uh, the reality of um, more rate increases to come send the market back to the downside so the week so far 396 profit factor 226 and uh, the win loss ratio is uh, 65 35 at the moment uh, you can see it just managed to do a few trades uh, last night uh, missed the one in the morning um, but uh, took advantage uh, last night and in the s p continuing to move to the upside stronger than the dow at the moment uh, 30 minute chart uh, you can see quick recovery from the spike down towards uh, Tuesday's low there, uh, straight back up and is still above the DP at the moment and the close will need to hold above the DP and this is the same for all markets. Holding above the DP will be important if the market is to continue the bullish stance that we have in the daily chart at the moment. Again, we're all green bars at the moment in the S&P 500. In the UK 100, we're stuck in the sideways range, barely a reaction yesterday to uh, the FOMC you can see that we moved up sharply in the morning and then gave back all of the gains in the afternoon and traded down to uh, last night's uh, low there in the uh, 30 minute chart at the moment and below the DP so looking fairly sluggish and weakish for the FTSE 100 at the moment and in the uh, GBP JPY uh, you can see we're up on the overnight strongly up again yesterday I have to look at the monthly chart to see where we're at the moment and we're at 15 uh, 2015 highs so uh, the GBP JPY really uh, marching to the upside at the moment as it can be seen by this chart and in the 30 minute chart uh, overnight in Asia you can see that we've had a big move on the GBP JPY uh, which obviously is predicated on the news from last night which you can see there so uh, a big move of uh, 100 150 170 80 points there for the gbp jpy meanwhile the cable is uh, trading through yesterday on uh, news of 126.796 got a new high here so let's just mark this up as well uh, that's at 126.99 uh, so let's have a look at the bigger time frame for this let's have a look at a monthly chart just to see where we are in the bigger picture for the pound dollar you can see there we've got uh, the 50 ema in the way and that is around the 128 level so keep an eye on that one if you uh, trade it uh, we can see there let's just have a look at the weekly chart i'm intrigued to see what we've got on the upside so we have got um actually it was taken out yesterday that uh, high so the 200 ma in the 30 minute chart as well and in the 30 uh, in the weekly chart in the 30 minute chart uh, you can see yesterday also blistering move to the upside 
100 points and then back overnight and starting to move up uh, there slightly as the dollar obviously starting to weaken slightly but yesterday the dollar moving sharply to the upside so let's have a look at that and in the US dollar uh, down initially and then clawing back and then up on the overnight which uh, is why the GBP JPY is moving up um, so yeah i would be interested to see how strong the DAX is. The next FOMC, by the way, is the end of July. So there's a lot that can happen in between, and particularly in the metals, which uh, I'll talk about now. So as you can see here, we've had uh, two days now down in the silver market, and overnight uh, the price getting crushed as well. It's got to stay above that 89 at 23.35. If not, then I'm going to be switching to uh, the weekly or the monthly charts uh, to see where this market's going. Uh, they have the ideal opportunity now that um, the next FMC isn't for a good six weeks and uh, they can hammer this market all the way back down to uh, $20. Uh, there's no reason because they've taken the the foot off the uh, the accelerator in the US, paused, and they'll take, you know, so they'll take advantage of that and try and uh, move everything to the upside as far as the market's concerned. Uh, stocks etc but so the metals are likely to come in for some uh, serious pounding so uh, keep that in mind 30 minute chart you can see it already overnight uh, finding a bit of support there at uh, 23.50 at the moment but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't give it a good kick in uh, just to get the price down it's in staggering to, to, find, to still look at this and see that it's 60% cheaper than it's all time high the only thing in the world I think at uh, this time in the gold market also hammered overnight down to the 1931 support to the left that we've seen there so another one that's been crushed and uh, again you can see that uh, here but trying to get back at the moment um, above the 1934 is it the 35 level 1935 is the blue line there and finally, uh, as I say about silver getting crushed, well, it's evident here, isn't it? Uh, even overnight, uh, you can see that it's been hammered to the downside, uh, which is why the gold-silver ratio has moved back to the upside. And uh, no doubt is going to continue moving to the upside as well as we go forward. Uh, because uh, we needed to see uh, more uh, on the, the rates from Powell for this market and of course, uh, the blatant manipulation uh, as well, which we've seen for a very long time. Taking effect once more, clearing the way for uh, the uh, the manipulators to keep crushing the price so that it can be bought for solar panels and the industrial side of it uh, cheaper. Right, that's it for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.